Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and this is Prime. Jeff Sessions and Bill Barr, who both served as attorney general during the Trump administration, and their attorney, deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, deny any knowledge of Justice Department seizing communications records of Democratic lawmakers, their staffs, and even their families. Earlier this evening, the House Judiciary Committee announced it will open a formal investigation into the surveillance of members of Congress, journalists, and others. The investigation and denials come on the heels of reports that the Justice Department issued secret subpoenas to obtain records from Apple about two Democratic members of the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell, along with former White House counsel Don McGahn. The seizures stem from an investigation by the Trump administration to identify the sources of leaks regarding intelligence and investigations into alleged Trump campaign collusion with Russia and national security issues to media outlets. The Trump administration appears to have targeted Representative Schiff and Swalwell due to their access to classified information and their criticism of Trump and his campaign. Then the administration began an investigation of McGahn after they attempted to pressure him to facilitate the firing of Robert Mueller, who was investigating Trump's 2016 campaign and its possible ties to Russia. While the investigations began under Sessions in 2018 and were ordered to continue under Barr in 2020, it is interesting, I guess we could use that word, that neither one was apparently aware of the subpoenas especially given that Apple was placed under gag order on three separate occasions over the subpoenas. Watergate journalist Carl Bernstein had this to say in comparing the actions of former presidents Donald Trump and Richard Nixon. Trump's actions go far, much farther than Nixon's and were much more grievous because Trump is really guilty of crimes against democracy. It's not just about screwing his enemies, it's about getting everything he wants for himself, for his own political ends, for his own financial gain, for his family. He would undermine the very basic premise of democracy. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi appeared on CNN's State of the Union, where she had this to say about the lack of accountability of the Trump administration and the pursuit of communications data. How could it be that there could be an investigation of other members in the other branch of government and the press and the rest, too? Mm -hmm. the, and, and the attorneys general did not know. So who are these people and are they still in the Justice Department? And again, this is just out of the question, no matter who's president, whatever party, this cannot be the way it goes. But the secret subpoenas are far from the only issue where Republicans are avoiding accountability. Members of the Republican Party are still downplaying the severity of the January 6th insurrection. During an appearance on Fox News, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson declared that from Eyewitness accounts that he has been provided, the majority of the people on Capitol Hill on that day were in a, quote, jovial mood. Also, the images that we've seen from January 6th are nothing like what an insurrection looks like. We've seen plenty of video of people in the Capitol, and, and they weren't rioting. It, they don't, it doesn't look like an armed insurrection when you have people that breach the Capitol, and I don't condone it, but they're staying within the rope lines in the rotunda. That's not what an armed insurrection would look like. The Republican playbook of admit nothing, deny everything, may be one of the biggest threats to our democracy. Where exactly does that stop? Joining us to discuss is political commentator and author of the new book, This Country, Chris Matthews. Mr. Matthews, thank you for joining me, sir. Charles, thank you. I'm here. So the Republican, the, the Republican uh, strategy here seems to work, and it's really hard to see where the accountability steps in. Trump faced very little accountability while in office. When people were called, were subpoenaed to go, come before Congress, many of them just simply ignored the subpoenas. Uh, we have a, 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 an insurrection that has happened on January 6th, and it looks like both the House and, as well, at least the Senate will, will, will take up no action towards having an independent, bipartisan 
investigation. Where does this end? Where, where will accountability be for the Republican Party in this? Well, this is a huge question. Uh, I'll try to begin with my emotions and my feelings. I uh, worked on the Hill 15 years. I was a Capitol cop for a number of months as a patronage appoint appointee. And then I worked all the way up to being the administrative assistant or the top aide to the speaker. For six years, I did that. So I'm, I spent a good part of my life with either protecting the Capitol or working in it and seeing democracy at work. And I, uh, I felt defiled that day. I felt invaded. I saw it was, this, it was desecration of our democratic cathedral, basically. It's what we all believe in, which is democrat, dem democracy. And to see those people go in there and basically desecrate it, I, I mean, I felt, I felt invaded. And I, and I think we all should, because think about what happened in that capital over the years. We, we debated slavery there. Lincoln gave his second inaugural address on the steps there, probably the greatest speech along with Dr. King speaks in 63, ever given in this country, because it tried to explain the Civil War, which cost the lives of 600,000 people, Americans. Uh, and he explained it as part of a biblical uh, justice for slavery. What was taken by the whip will be paid for by the sword. I mean, you can't get more serious than that. And Lincoln was trying to explain the moral horror of the whip by explaining the horror of the sword of people shooting right. each other uh, across open plains. So what I see is all, I said all as part of, I'm sure you do reading your column, Charles, there's a progression here, a very easy, understandable uh, movement. It starts with Trump mm -hmm. coming out of the election of 2020 and saying two days later, I won, which is a ludicrous claim. Two thirds of the Republican party, 70% even of his party, uh, say he's right, that, that Biden lost. It illegitimate this election Trump had won and then of course you had January 6th and then you had a general who I didn't think was nuts maybe he is General Michael Flynn coming out and saying that we should support should support a military takeover of this country of our democracy well neither that only got headlines for about 24 hours Charles that's the shocking transition we have moved from an election where the first defeated president ever said he didn't lose and lied to the country. Even Nixon met with Kennedy down in Key Biscayne and basically turned it over to him and said, you won, yeah. buddy. I, I think I have a case to make in Chicago, Nixon could have said, or in LBJ's Texas. God knows what was going on down there. But Nixon said, I'm not going to screw up our country in the middle of the Cold War. I'm going to move on, although he was always embittered by it. And of course, later in his career, that bitterness did surface, as Carl Bernstein's reporting and Bob Woodward's definitely disclosed. Right. But you know, he didn't screw up the country like this guy. He's got a good portion of this country, mostly white people. I bet his people, we know they look like, wow, we saw them on camera in the Capitol uh, with mm -hmm. horns on and everything else, believing that Trump is telling them the truth. Trump told them tomorrow morning he lost the election. They believe that too. He told us that Barack yeah, Obama. But, but, but Trump couldn't do what yeah. he's doing without the support and, and, and of the Republican Party. Like, there's no way no, this is going to happen. All... The only reason that Trump got as far as he did and, and has taken over this party is because they abdicated. They laid down. They thought he would self emulate. They thought that, you know, he would say so many crazy things that the people will eventually turn on him. So they didn't do the attacking themselves. They didn't say, this is crazy. We can't do this. And so they did that for so long that it got to a point where they couldn't do it. Because now the well, people had bought the lie for so long. Yeah. But they had pre-game Trump long before Trump came along. The stuff that Trump ran on, anti-black, anti-immigrant, the whole thing, come on, the tax cuts for the rich, that was always the right, the Republican line before this guy came along and exploded Absolutely. to hell. He took all the Republican stuff and exploded it into this magic of elections and he won those people that came out of the hills to vote literally they came out of the hills in 2016 they'd never been to a polling with some of those people and they showed up because trump spoke it out loud he didn't have it we didn't have a suit on he didn't make it sound good he just said what it was he said this guy this mm -hmm. african-american president is from kenya he's an illegal immigrant he should be in jail let alone in the white house that's what he sold but it was already there he's not a creative thinker trump he saw it was out there and he exploited right. the hell out of it that's what he does and now he so tells he takes them these lies. He's exploited, but now the right so Trump exploited the situation. But now, and maybe this has always been the case as well. But now Democrats and Republicans are playing by completely different rule books. 
you know, the, Democrats keep talking about, oh, we want to do something bipartisan. We want to build bridges. We want to build, literally build bridges across the political gap, but also bridges in the country. Republicans are not playing that game. They're literally saying, we're going to stop you at every at every count. We do not care that we are we have our our bases following something that is not true. Uh, it, it's a, these are two different universes that these parties are living in. Well, the, the Republican trick, and it was very, it was developed by Nixon's guy back in his first House race, Murray Chotner. He said that the average voter walks into the voting booth with no more. He maxes out or she maxes out with three thoughts. So make sure all three thoughts are about the opponent and they're all negative. It used to be, you know, corruption, communism, and Korea, or then it was acid, abortion, and whatever else. Uh, and now this year, I just made the list, it's going to be next election. First of all, they're going to make sure that Biden gets nothing passed from now on, nothing. He has to go in there naked, basically, politically. It's going to be crime, which can also be interpreted as race, the way they play it. It will be, of course, prices and inflation, which is just going to be one of their big issues. They're ready for that one. And the border, which is about ethnicity. So uh, they know what they're going to do. They're going to hit you just know Mitch McConnell's head. You know, he's no, he's no, you know, he's, he's no Elmer Fudd. He is Bugs Bunny. He is smart. He gets away with it. He says, I'm going to screw him at every path, as you said, Charles, get nothing through. And then go into next year's election with the three biggies, the border, all the border. Their inflation, that could be a legitimate issue. And of course, crime, they're going to build up that with white fear. So they're going to run. I'm just using your template here. A totally negative campaign next year. They think they get the House back and maybe the Senate. And then they can screw and undercut Biden for another two years. You'll get nothing done. And then they can run God knows who the Senate or Trump again. As soon as always, Mr. Matthews, thank you so much for joining me, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Great. Thanks for having me on.